Hello everyone, welcome to another tutorial on HarshGandhi.in. Today we are going to look at a very major issue that is present in the Orange Pi Zero and how to fix it. The problem that I am talking about is overscan issue. Orange Pi Zero has only one video out which is through the composite output and the video is overscanning by about 20 pixels on every edge. If you have installed any desktop environment, you might have noticed that some of the border screen elements are not visible and we want to fix it. By some of the border elements, I mean if you can see over here, this is the login screen and the top bar is uh, gone almost out of the screen range. So we will want to fix it. In this tutorial, I am using Ambient based on Debian Jesse. Current Ambient with Ubuntu base has a problem with the XORG and does not start with the desktop environment as it can't find a screen. If you are starting just now and do not have a working graphical environment, you can check out my previous video where I have taught in detail how to use XFCE working. If you do not want to use XFCE, and like me, you also want to use LXDE, which I will be using in this tutorial. Then by using the following command, sudo apt install xorg light dm LXDE, and then reboot, you will have a working LXDE environment. So now I'll log into the X LXDE. And as you can see, the power button option over to the right bottom is a bit cut out. And also the LXDE option is a cut out. If we use a file manager such as PCMan-FM, you can see that the top bar has almost gone out of range and you won't be able to see any buttons or anything and even the left part has gone. So basically 20 pixels on every edge. If you go to the LXDE option and in preferences and then in monitor settings, you will see the resolution that is 720 by 576. And we want to reduce it so as to have a 680 by 536 resolution. And we'll be removing 20 pixels from each side. To achieve this, we'll first log in via SSH. Since the screen that I am using has a very low resolution due to the easy cap quality, I'll SSH into my system. Okay, so I have now SSH into my system. And then we'll run the following commands. First, we need to edit the script.bin file. So we'll use the command bin to fix What this command does is it will take the script.bin binary file and then convert it to fex file which will be editable. Now if we edit it via nano, we'll have to search for uh, fb0 underscore width. So control w fb0. So here you can see FB0 width. We'll need to edit it to 680 and change the FB0 height to 536. Then save it by using Control X and saying yes. And then file name as script.fx. Now that we have edited our script.fx, we'll also need to change it to bin file again. So we'll use fx to bin and then script.fx to script.bin. Now we'll need to move the script.bin again to the boot folder from where we got it. So use the command sudo cp script.bin slash boot and enter the password
and now that we have added it so we'll need to reboot the system all right now that we have rebooted uh, you can see that the entire screen has now moved to the left by about 40 pixels to the left and 40 pixels to the top and there will be a black bar at the bottom and there will be a black bar at the right side so now we want to move everything to the center so that we can have the entire screen uh, in our perspective to do that uh, we'll need to manipulate the TV encoder racing parameter register of the H2 plus SOC. For this we will use a tool called devmem2 which helps to read and write directly to the memory. To install devmem2 we will use the following commands. Now that I have SSHed into the system we will use this uh, wget command to get our devmem2.c file this is a link to my github repository so you can be sure that it will always remain on github so we'll download this devmem2.c all right so now that we have downloaded it we'll need to compile it via gcc command gcc dot slash devmem2.c And now that it's been done, we'll move it to our user local bin file. So sudo move dot slash a out uh, dot slash a out has just been compiled due to our GCC command. And now move it to slash user slash local slash bin devmem2. So this will rewrite the program a dot out to devmem2. Now that we have completed it, we'll change the memory values as follows. Type sudo dev mem2 and then enter the register values 0x01e00130. E Make sure to use the register values exactly as I have shown it. Uh, otherwise you will uh, bark up your system by writing to some other unknown memory. All right, so now I'll hit enter. And as you can see, suddenly the screen popped into our field of view and the entire screen is now visible. If we use some file manager, you can see the entire file manager is now in our view. Uh, sure, we have a little bit of black borders uh, to every side, but the main problem that is the overscanning issue has been fixed. If you go to the file preferences and uh, monitor settings, you can see the screen resolution has now been changed to 680 by 536. So this is what you wanted and this is what has happened. But this change will only remain here till this uh, session is working on. Once the system is rebooted, the shift in the picture will go away and all the picture will move to left top. So in order to make this uh, permanent and make the shift happen every time the system is rebooted, add the command in rc.local file as follows. Type sudo nano slash hc dot slash uh, rc dot local. And as you can see here, there are no commands currently, but we'll enter our command. This will be without sudo, so just devmem2, the memory register value, write command and then the value that we want to write over here. And then control x, say yes and then enter for the name and we have done it. This should now always fix your video as soon as the board boots up.
So I'll give a sudo reboot command just to make sure that it's working fine. I would like to give a shout out to Giri over at forum.ambient.com who provided these steps to fix it. He researched the documentation and found out the register value where we can make the changes so that uh, the screen will get proper. If you feel that Ambient made your life better, consider a donation over at ambient.com slash donate so that they can keep up the good work. If you enjoyed the video, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. If you are looking to purchase the hardware that I have shown in my videos, I have provided all the store links in the description. I have some other tutorials in the pipeline, so subscribe to my channel to receive updates with new tutorials are released. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.